as I have said earlier, I have been lucky, I've been privileged, I've been granted by God the opportunity to have done many things, to have gone to good schools, to have traveled to the six continents of the world. As we mentioned now, North Korea, Russia, Australia, South America, North America, Canada, England, and of course, various parts of Africa. Um, it's a golden opportunity. You learn so much. Uh, Singapore, uh, uh, I don't know, it is, it's amazing how uh, we even have an Igbo proverb who says that the traveler is wiser than uh, a wise man because he sees so many things. Uh, being exposed to uh, various cultures uh, uh, is a golden opportunity for many things. I have also had the privilege of leading Nigerian contingents to international festivals. You mentioned North Korea now. We've been to other parts of Panafest in uh, Congo, Congo Brazzaville in Ghana. Uh, festivals of theater and music in Mexico, Brazil, uh, Venezuela, uh, international choral festivals in the United States, and uh, I've mentioned Italy and Germany, and so things. So such exposure is God-given. Um, and you learn a lot from, from them. For example, Obi Dimba was written in North Korea. I don't know why now, but uh, that's where I was for uh, two weeks. And uh, in the evenings, I had uh, uh, not very much to do except, and I, I, I composed that. But um, these experiences add up, increase your knowledge and wisdom. And uh, uh, at school, at Omaha, we had a motto, Excelsior. Always look for the better. Do, do look for the, go to higher. Go uh, find superior, aim towards the sublime, the ethereal, the, the more heavenly. Uh, look for the better uh, each time. Uh, don't be satisfied. As I said earlier, even when I was an undergraduate, I kept saying, ah, this one will teach in Africa. This we will not teach in Africa. For example, when I was um, made director of the Nigerian uh, Choir and Orchestra, of uh, National Orchestra and Choir of Nigeria, I thought of coming, forming a Nigerian orchestra which would blend the Western instruments with African instruments. And I did that to some extent. Unfortunately, the, uh, the funding was, was not coming uh, from the federal government, which set up the, uh, uh, the committee in the first place. And uh, so we didn't continue after 2001 or, or thereabouts when it was started. But if we had given that opportunity, I would used my experience with studying with Adrian Bolt and conducting Western Orchestra to a very high level and working in Nigeria uh, and other African countries to have an amalgam of Western and African instruments into an orchestra that would be unique in Nigeria, uh, a combination of Western instruments and uh, African instruments uh, so the our orchestra is, is not just a poor replica of London Symphony Orchestra or uh, uh, you know Monday, uh, this uh, Cincinnati Orchestra, but something unique, uh, benefiting from the experiences uh, gathered around the world. So, but um, that did not work out. So it's, it is an opportunity that God has given me and which I tried to use within the limitations of my own inability and shortcomings, which are numerous, uh, 
and within the limitations of a country in which we live anyway, uh, 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 we, we, we can do very much. But what um, makes me a difficult man is um, I don't believe in people pretending to be what they are not and arguing about something they know nothing about and uh, forming the opinion, which is unfortunate, that because I cannot do this, it is not important. And therefore, it's not necessary. I use myself as, as an example. I'm not a pianist, but I studied piano and uh, even did a, a teaching diploma in it. But of course, I've not practiced. practiced like, uh, I've fallen far short of what I used to be. But I can't say because I'm not a pianist, piano is not necessary in Nigeria. It is very necessary. Keyboard playing. It is very, unfortunately, I cannot do it. I cannot do everything. I'm not talented in that way. Uh, people, because they do not know theory of music, they say it's not necessary. We do African music. Well, it does not make it unnecessary because you don't do it. You are, you are not able to do it because you don't have the talent in that area. Uh, so you only, the, the, the ones you can do and talk about frivolities, that is what is important. That I don't accept. And I, uh, uh, many people don't ag agree with me there because how many PhDs do we have in music? Social anthropology. They talk about analysis when they have to go, uh, 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 conferences. And what they call analysis, it's not analysis. Uh, but uh, uh, they wouldn't even allow you to put in a word edgewise because they are already professors. And who are you to tell them that what they, to try and show that they don't know it? Well, so that's what makes me unpopular because I don't accept charlatanry. People who pretend to be what they are not and uh, cannot take criticism. Criticism is the first thing you must do. And that's what I did all the time, criticizing myself. When I was in England, I took an exam every time, almost for four years, in you know, various branches of music and theater and, and theater, because each examination board has a different thing. And I wanted to be covered on all fronts piano, singing. Uh, quiet uh, training, theory of music, conducting, took exams, Trinity College, Royal College of Music, uh, Royal Academy, Guildhall, uh, Germany, Italy. Take various exams, uh, take degrees in different areas so to get covered, get as much knowledge as you can and leave the rest to God. You cannot be 100% in everything, but by God, if you get a first class in one or two things. You have confidence. And people confuse confidence with, with arrogance. No, self-confidence is different from arrogance. I don't look down on the people. I, I can't uh, stomach charlatanry who pretend uh, to what they are not. And so that's why I'm not popular. And I have no apologies for it. Some of my students have done very well. Ujuku has done very well. Uh, even though he didn't go any further than what I taught Martin Suka. But there are many people who learned no more than they did at Tonsuka or anywhere else, with all the shortcomings there, who claim to be gods in music. So he who knows not and knows not that he knows not is the description of the you know what. Anyway, uh, unfortunately, many things are not studied in Nigeria that should be studied. One, because there's no one to teach them. You cannot teach what you don't know. Two, because um, the facilities are not even there. Uh, and that's what makes us going round and round in a loop, recycling the whole mm, mm, ignorance. Uh, at one time, Shoka thrived in students' peer teaching. A student who goes to university to study music without knowing rudiments. He goes to peer teach. What's he going to teach other people? And they come out with first class. I have had experience of many students who, 
who've come to me uh, with one with first class. Uh, was sent by the priest, my church many years ago, to come to me for a job uh, or to help him do postgraduate uh, studies. He had a first class degree from the University of Nigeria, Soka. And I said, okay, um, let me see how much you know about music. He said, what did you do specialize? He said, music. I said, what did you do? He said, music. I said, okay, uh, give me uh, the notes of a first inversion of a dominant seventh chord in G. He said, G? Dominant seventh? She didn't know what I was talking about. She had a first class, last degree. I mean, how can you have a first class honors degree in any branch of music without knowing what a dominant seven chord is? Well, but well that is uh, what you have in Nigeria. Uh, people want to teach music. What do they want to teach? Rudiments. Want to teach rudiments. Want to teach rudiments. Or African music. Who is going to teach music if you take off the African from it? So we're in a vicious circle of, of that. And I don't uh, like that. Yeah. A pity. <laughs> but I'm an old fogey. I'll soon be gone anyway. So Nigeria has the type of government it, it, it deserves. Look at our national anthem. Look at our national anthem. We can't even set words to music properly. This is what you do at grade five of the associated board exams setting words to music. You know where the accents are. Our rise of compatriots, uh, Nigeria's oh God of creation. Uh, 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 what was the word? Uh, the last uh, line. Uh, nation bound in freedom. Free, uh, nation where something. Where peace and justice shall reign. The accents are and. So we are in peace and justice reign. So we shall we sing that. The harmony is atrocious. The harmony is left by, bless his memory, uh, 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 say that the police band plays. I don't know if that's a national anthem. I have uh, written a letter which I'm yet to, yet to, to subscribe because we're approaching 60 years of independence. And I don't think we can be playing this around with this as a national anthem, with its harmony, with its, the word set in music, uh, without accent, uh, proper accentuation of words. We're talking of tone and as accent, Nigerian language and uh, other languages. How can we not even put the right, right syllables on the right stresses in a piece of music that we call a national anthem? But who am I? You can only say so much. And you hide your head in shame when they play it. Other countries, when they play, they, they, they discard the harmony. They, if they want to play, they play. They harmonize it and play their own. Luckily, they don't have to sing it because they wouldn't sing such words that are so out of context. Oh, God of creation. Okay, oh, God of creation. So, oh, God of creation, direct our noble cause. And, uh, uh, to, to build a nation where peace and justice are. Okay, build a nation where in peace and justice reign. At, at least have the accent on the right was grade five of setting words to music, apart from harmony. No, it is, uh, I can't uh, stand such things. So I don't um, discuss them because it is unfortunate. Uh, very few people know. I've, uh, said so in some other fora. It is unfortunate that in the arts, and this includes music, literature, drama, drawing and painting, uh, sculpture, you know me, in the arts, most Nigerians, including vice chancellors, governors, uh, justices, uh, uh, you know me, most most Nigerians are like a primary school teacher, and a primary school boy, who believes that his headmaster's English is the best in the world. And that primary school boy, if you tell him that uh, somebody else speaks or writes better English than his 
Headmaster, he said, oh, you must be mad. My headmaster, nobody can read better English than he. Because that boy believes that his headmaster's English is better than what I show in cars, or yours or mine. Because it is beyond him to judge. He doesn't know the difference. And so when it comes to drawing and painting and music and theatre and the literature, many vice chancellors don't know the difference between the painting of Ben and Wong and that of the roadside artist who draws and paints crocodile heads on tailboards of lorries. It's beyond him to judge. He cannot tell the difference, the difference between the organ playing of Falashwa and the Bankala with that of the village of organist who vamps on 145. is beyond him to judge. Just as he does not know that his headmaster does not write or speak half, one tenth, one hundredth of uh, good English as Falashwa and Ken does, or you, or, or even I. Because um, it's beyond him to judge. Unfortunately, many of us in that category, including vice chancellors, including judges, including governors. I don't say all, but many. So anyway, that's the situation.